let us turn this image into a darker, more moody image using a little bit of Lightroom editing. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So with this being our raw file, looking at Instagram, you can see it's nicely exposed and it's already more on the darker side with some midtones and very few highlights across the image. I want to emphasize that and make it even darker with some deeper shadows and more vibrant color tones. So first off, let's open up the basic panel. And since we're working with an autumn scene, I do want to alter the colors quite heavily by choosing a different profile. So let's open up the profile drop down menu. And here I'm going to hit on the browse button because for this image, I want to use the artistic free profile right here. This will give us some very heavy orange tones. So let's choose the profile and hit close. Obviously, by default, this profile is way too heavy handed. So I want to tone down the amount, bring it down to around 55. And what this does is it will reveal more of the green and yellow tones from before from our raw file. So we have a nice mixture of healthy autumn color tones. Now with the profile setup, what I want to do next is work on the exposure and make this shot look darker and just a little more moody. So I'm going to start this by bringing down the exposure. That's a very basic step. And as I adjust the exposure, I'm paying very close attention to the histogram because of course we're making it darker, but we don't want to underexpose anything too badly to the point where it starts clipping some of these blacks. Right now you can see a clipping warning. I can click on it. So Lightroom will make it visible in the image. You can see some blue spots right here in the very dark parts. These are areas that are actually clipping. That's something we want to prevent most of the times. I personally think if it's in an area that is not important to the image, a little bit of clipping is okay. But let's work on that in a moment. What I want to do as well is to bring down the highlights all the way. This will kind of lessen the contrast and again help making this image a bit darker. And I'm also going to bring down the shadows and I'm going to drop them quite dramatically. So at this point, the image already looks quite a bit different. And I want to start bringing back some more contrast. We already dropped the shadows, pushing the histogram further to the left side. And now I want to bring up the whites very, very gently. And by doing this, we are bringing back contrast as we are spreading the histogram. This is looking really, really nice. Now we still have the clipping areas in the darker parts. What I want to do to fix that is to bring up the blacks. Let's raise it to right around here. Now to add back a bit of contrast, I'm going to increase the dehaze down below. And at the same time, I want to bring down the clarity, which will introduce some kind of soft dreamy effect on top. And I'm going to bring up the texture, which will sharpen the smallest details of the image. So in the end, we get a sharp and detailed picture with some kind of autumn glow effect, thanks to the reduced clarity added on top. Now I'm quite happy with the basic adjustments. Now I do want to work on the white balance and the overall saturation a bit. So I think this image could use some more coldness. That's the reason for me to bring down the temperature a notch. And the green tint might be a bit too strong. So I want to bring up the tint to counter that. So just a little bit like this. Perfect. Now, because we have changed the profile earlier in the process, the colors are a little less saturated. Of course, we want to change that as well. So let's bring up the vibrance. And I also want to bring up the saturation. Okay, this is looking really, really good. Let's compare the image to before real quick to see the difference. As you can see, immediately it's a lot darker than before. Of course, we have these way stronger autumn color tones. And now, we can already spot a few areas where we need to change things a bit more drastically, like right here in the foreground, because this spot is way too bright at the moment. I'm going to do that with masking, but first, what I want to do as well is to head into the effects step real quick, and I want to introduce some vignetting using that vignetting slider right here, bringing it down a notch. This will already help focusing the viewer's eye more on the center of the image. 
I think that's a bit too much. So let's go with something like minus six. All right, and now let's do the masking. Open up the masking panel and there's actually not much going on. What I want to do is to use a radial gradient coming down from the top like this. I'm placing the center outside the frame and I want to use this radial gradient to add some glow coming down from the top. So I'm going to slightly boost the blacks and I'm also going to bring up the exposure to make this particular area a bit brighter. Okay, this should already be enough. I really don't want to overdo it. I want to keep it very subtle. I'm also going to use a radial gradient basically for that road leading through the image. Let's rotate it to fit the shape of the road. And what I want to do in this area is to make it slightly brighter by bringing up the exposure very gently. Okay. Then I also want to make the, the vignetting effect in the very near foreground stronger. So let me use a linear gradient for that. I'm covering the very near foreground like this. All I'm doing now is to bring down the exposure. We can drop it quite heavily. Again, I'm just paying close attention to the histogram because I don't want to clip the darkest areas, but this is looking great. Finally, I might want to use a color range mask. Let me try something. I want to target this white line Obviously this color range mask will select way more than I, I want. So I'm going to make use of that refine slider, bring it down a notch. And I'm also going to say subtract linear gradient and take away a part from the very top. So what I want to do with this selection is to make it a little bit brighter by bringing up the exposure. And maybe even bring up the whites. And what this will do is it, it makes the road look a little bit more interesting, at least in my opinion, with the brighter highlights in that road. But I guess that's already it for the masking as well. Let me turn off the masks so we can see the transformation from before. You can see it's a, a rather flat image after the basic adjustments to after. And here we have shaped the light of the scene a little more with that heavier vignetting effect and that light coming down from the top. So now we can do a bit of color grading. Let's start in the color mixer. Uh, I do think I want to work on the luminance first, which means I'm going to bring up the orange luminance, making those fallen leaves on the ground just a bit brighter by doing so. I'm also going to bring up the yellow luminance, making the yellow leaves brighter. And I actually want to drop the green luminance a little bit just to make the green tones darker. Okay, luminance wise, I think this looks good. What I'm not happy with at the moment is uh, the color palette of this image because we basically have just one autumn color with that muddy yellow. So with the hue settings, we can change that. I want to bring back some of these green tones by making use of the green hue slider, bringing it up just a little bit. And as I push the green hue, you can see there are green tones being introduced back into this image. This is looking good, but we can further tweak things. I'm going to bring down the yellow hue to add more orange tones to this shot. And I'm also going to bring down the orange hue to add more red to this image. All right, this is looking great. And at this point we can work on the saturation. I basically want to push orange quite heavily. So let's bring it up like this. And I do think I also want to push the yellow tones quite a bit. All right, this is looking great. I do think that's already enough. We don't need to change any more colors in this saturation panel. Now I'm skipping over the color grading because I don't think the split toning is needed at this point. What I want to do, however, is to head into the calibration tab and I want to bring down the blue primary hue, just altering these colors a little more. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation of all three colors right here. So let's start with blue, then green and red. Of course, at this point, it's a very, very vibrant image. I think it looks good, but of course, if you don't like it, I would suggest to not make use of the calibration saturation sliders. Okay, now we're almost done with this darker looking version of this forest scene. 
all that's left to do now is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's go into the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings for all my images. I'm starting by dropping the radius all the way down. This just defines the radius around edges that will get sharpened. So if I bring it down all the way, 0.5 pixels around an edge will get sharpened by the details adjustments here. Then I'm bringing up the details all the way up. And of course, you want to make use of masking. Let's hold down the Alt key and adjust the masking slider. Since there are a lot of tiny details in this image, the masking for this scene is not that effective. Still, we want to use it. So somewhere around here looks nice. And again, since there are so many details, I don't want to sharpen too crazy, but let's still bring up the amount of sharpening like this. And that is pretty much it for editing this image in Lightroom. Now there are a few things I might want to clean up. So let me open this shot in Photoshop. I'm going, to, I'm going to right click the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Right away, let me create a backup layer by hitting Ctrl J. And I'm going to zoom in on this top left corner because there are things in the image I want to remove like these, like these tree branches. I can try using the spot healing brush, but I think but I don't think this will work nicely. Let's just try brushing over these things. Actually, it seems to work quite good. Now for these bigger leaves, I don't think the spot healing brush will work. So I'm going to use the remove tool and let's just hope this works. Actually, no, let me use the generative fill because I really don't like the performance of the remove tool. I'm going to grab the lesser tool and I'm just making a rough selection around that leaf. And let's just hope Photoshop can handle this. Let's hit generate the fill and hit generate. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's keep on going with the other leaves. Again, let's hit generate the fill and hit generate. All right, this is looking much, much better than before. Much cleaner. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this little tutorial about creating these darker, more moody images in Lightroom was helpful. If you have anything you want to add or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments as always. And thank you so much for watching this video.